So I finally got around to this video. Today we're discussing the San Francisco 49ers quarterback controversy. It's a lot closer than people think, and that's why we're going to talk about this today, getting into it all. Very in-depth dive. Now, before we say anything, what does Kyle Shanahan want in a quarterback? I think he wants a guy who can throw his quick slants. I think he wants a guy who, when we're filling the box with eight, trying to stop the run with McCaffrey and those guys, he wants the guy who can hit the deep shot to Ayuk. He wants the guy who can hit that seam shot to George Kittle. But he also wants a guy who's mobile enough. Now, you don't have to be a design runner, but you still have to be mobile, being able to evade in the pocket, having great pocket movement, being able to get some of these sprint outs, some of these boot and play action calls because they love to do that. Now, you just don't have to lose the game. Honestly, I don't think he's looking for a Patrick Mahomes. I don't think he's looking for a Josh Allen, a guy who can make all of the throws that need to be made and do a little bit more if needed. It won't be needed a lot with this great defense and this great running game. Now, got to be able to get through those progressions quick and get back to that check down. That's a lot of what this offense is predicated off of. And I'm going to start off with Sam Donald in this quarterback controversy. Now, before I say anything about Sam Darnold, we got to get rid of the face, get rid of the name, the jersey, all of the things. We just have to think about the quarterback himself. And going into this, yeah, that was really hard for me because I've heard the untapped potential. I heard greatest thrower of the football they've had and all of these things. And I went into the film. I wasn't driven. You know, I wasn't pushed to say, OK, that's true. But I can firmly say at the end of the day, when I looked at this film, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, I don't gain anything by speaking glowingly about Sam Darnold, but I was very surprised and I was very intrigued. Wanted to see more out of this six game stretch. And let's talk about it. Let's look at the stats. 1,143 yards, seven touchdowns, three interceptions. Now, there's some cause for concern with one thing. He does still turn over the ball. And you say three interceptions, that's not bad. But two of those came in one game, and he had five fumbles in his last two games. Six fumbles total in the season. Now, this three-game stretch from Pittsburgh to Tampa Bay, that is some of the best quarterback play you're going to see in a condensed form. That is some great quarterback play. And I mean, that Tampa Bay game, he was slinging it. That Detroit game, he was slinging it. Timing, precision, deep shots, all of the things that you want to see. And, and I was pleasantly surprised by that because Sam Darnold was playing like a good quarterback. I'm not going to take it to great quarterback, but he was playing like a very good quarterback in this league. And you see in that stretch, they were one and two. Understandable, but he he can't win the game by himself. And I don't think Kyle Shanahan's asking him to win the game by himself. Now, understanding that the run game is going to be there, I think Sam Darnold can do everything Brock Purdy can do just a little better that is my selling point into what he can do now with brock purdy some of the things that i see and these guys they'll both take risk they'll both make that errant throw they will do that you have to be able to live with that but a guy who's going to push the ball down the field it's always that possibility that an errant throw will come behind that now with that being said i think brock purdy his deep ball his deep ball is a little concerning to me. And like I said, we're being truthful. We're being truthful about all of this. So let's take away, you know, the subjectivity. Let's truthfully look at these guys. And I think his deep ball, some of the risk he's taking, taking those hits, not being the biggest guy like that. And we saw the injury in the, in the um, conference game, but I just don't think it's like Sam Darnold's deep ball. And in that Dallas Cowboys game, I saw a lot of that. Some of those throws, I felt like he was startled. And we're going to say he settled in. We're going to say all of that. But truthfully, they start to run that football against the Dallas Cowboys. And that's how you beat the 2022 Dallas Cowboys. They weren't a great run defense. Talk about Leighton Van Der Esch, all those guys. They weren't great stopping the run. So once Christian McCaffrey got going, once all those guys got going, it was kind of a tough game. Pick your poison. And then the passes start to accrue. And then Michael Parsons kind of slowed down a bit. But before I talk about Brock Purdy and my, and my analysis in this quarterback controversy, let's talk about the wild card. And that's Trey Lance. Now, you talk about Brock Purdy. We talk about Sam Darnold. And these guys have great cases to be the starting quarterbacks of these teams. But Trey Lance, untapped potential is not the word. Trey Lance can be one of the best quarterbacks in football. The talent that he has in the 
and you know started one season at north dakota state and that's understandable as to why it may be a concern for some but i think at the end of the day we look at that season he was running the ball effectively and this was a guy who was out running people trucking people the deep shot was on point and i know we've all saw it i'm gonna show you the clip right here the new throwing mechanics driving the ball a little bit more looked like he has a little more power in his lower half getting the football out and that leads to quicker throwing motion all of those things now that's what you want in this offense i talk about the quick slants the wide receiver screens the running back screens the bubbles all of these things that trey lance can be able to do but trey lance adds that instinct he adds that thing with that design running game it's one thing for a quarterback to be mobile it's one thing for a quarterback to evade a sack trey lance can have a design running game we're talking about quarterback draw we're talking about read option we're talking about quarterback sweep quarterback power all of these things trey lance can do that and he has the frame to hold up with it. He's not a Josh Allen size, but think about Josh Allen and how he holds up against having those design quarterback runs, kind of be an extension of the run game for Buffalo. He can do that same thing for San Francisco. And with a Christian McCaffrey, with a Debo, with the Ayuk, a Kittle, all of these guys, he can be very scary in this offense. I think his deep ball is there. And understand, we talk about Trey Lance and we look at the Chicago game and, you know, those two games that he played to start the season. First off, the Chicago game was a mud ball. Who can truthfully play football in those conditions and play it at a high level from the quarterback position? First off, who's running the routes in, in this type of mud? Now, okay, you know, we're going to say shut up, play football. We're going to tell these guys that. But at the end of the day, it's just like the Super Bowl. Field conditions were terrible. And that's no excuses to why Mahomes want to ring. But still, guys are slipping and sliding, switching cleats at halftime. So I don't take a lot of stock into those two games. I don't take a lot of stock into any Trey Lance film up to this point because I think this is going to be kind of the first real glimpse of Trey Lance that we see. And it starts with training camp. It starts with preseason, regular season, all of those things. But I still need to see it. I just think from a talent standpoint, he's he's the most talented out of all these guys with the legs, with the arm. I'm talking about throwing power too. Now, Sam Donald, I talked about his, his deep ball. And it's good, but it's not great. And I think he has touch more than power. He's not going to throw the ball out there and say, go get it. But he's going to he's gonna have put it in the bread basket. It's going to be a lot of touch on the throw. It's going to be a very catchable throw. And I, I like to see that. Now, I'm going to end this off with Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy. And I think this is the fan favorite. Let me, let me, let me guys know who you think should be the quarterback in the comments because I know guys have their favorite and they're going to pick. But I think from what I've seen and what I've heard, Brock Purdy is the fan favorite. Now, let's get into Brock Purdy's stats. And in the regular season, 13 touchdowns to four interceptions. Only took 11 sacks, 22 carries, 13 rushing yards, not a lot there. And I mean, looking at his completion percentage, 67 completion percentage. Now, that's why people love Brock Purdy, because he's hitting. He's clicking on all cylinders, all keys. And it's kind of crazy to say he just came in and took control of the offense. Now, being on point with these guys, having the time, and you weren't the starter all the way through, this was the third string quarterback. We got to remember Jimmy G, Trey Lance, and Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy was the third guy in that rotation. So him coming in and doing what he did, it does hold some weight in what I think. In the playoffs, it didn't dip off. 65 completion percentage. Now, like I said, in this Dallas game, he seemed a bit rattled. Missed, some couple, missed a couple throws when you're saying, Brock Purdy, come on, we need those. But at the end of the day, they ended up winning the game. Dak Prescott had a worse game than Brock Purdy. Now, I just, I just think Brock Purdy has played the best football of these three, but I think he's the least talented. Now, don't go crazy when I say that. Don't go crazy when I say that. But at the end of the day, does it matter? Because you say, how is he making all these plays? How is he doing all these things? when he's the least talented. And I do think Kyle Shanahan did a great job of putting him in that system. I do think he had a great running game. I do think he had a, I would say the best defense in football, you know, rivaling with the Philadelphia Eagles, but I do think he had that on his side. And all the weapons, it's hard for me to say Brock Purdy 
shouldn't be the starting quarterback because based off the resume, he's earned the right to do that. And I think Brock Purdy, if healthy now, he's dealing with that elbow right now. And we have to see when does he effectively come back and he's himself. But I think he has to lose the job. I, I'm sorry. Now, I understand Trey Lance, and I talked about him, Donald, and I talked about their talent. Both of these guys having a lot of talent. But Brock Purdy has to lose this job for me because I take a lot of stock into, you know, talent is one thing. Potential is one thing. But how can you unlock that? And I think Brock Purdy unlocked the best of himself. The best of himself. Now, he can still get better at some things, and that's what we're looking at. And with that completion percentage, you think Brock Purdy plays a full season. I mean, we're talking offensive rookie of the year type production. So it's hard for me to look at that and say he shouldn't be the guy. But I do think Sam Donner is going to give a good case. I do think Trey Lance is going to give a good case. Now, if it were up to me, and I, I, I'm through my analysis of these guys, but I do think if I had to make the decision, like I said, I would let Brock Purdy lose the job. But just talking about these guys and all three of them. Now, what is Kyle Shanahan thinking? What are the fans of the San Francisco 49ers thinking? We're looking at Trey, we're looking at Sam, and we're looking at Brock. Now, Trey Lance probably has an advantage. The new throwing mechanics, being the athlete that he is, he should honestly be the guy who gets a lot of the gets a lot of the reps with the ones because we traded up all these picks for him. We did all of this stuff to get Trey Lance. We basically mortgaged our future to get Trey Lance. And to say that a Darnold or a Brock Purdy will start over him, that's kind of a slap in the face for the GM. Because why'd you do this if he's not that guy that you thought he was? You don't make that move unless you're sold. So Brock Purdy would have to lose the job. And then coming in, I think Trey Lance would have a great shot. He's going to get a lot of split reps with the ones. And we're going to say, okay, Brock and Trey, let's see it. Who has command of the offense? Who's more precise? Who has better time? And who has the better footwork of these guys? All the little things between the quarterbacks. We're going to look at that and say, okay. And then after that, Sam Darnold may be that third guy in that rotation. And I think you kind of brought him in to be that third guy because you can't knock off Brock Purdy after that season. And you can't knock off Trey because you gave up all of that to get Trey. So Sam Donald coming in, you're paying him some a decent amount of money, but it's one year and, you know, kind of a prove it deal for him. And I think he's trying to earn a contract somewhere else. But if Sam comes in, I think he can win the job. If, if Trey's not getting it done, if Brock gets hurt or one of these guys aren't getting it done, or say hypothetically, and, you know, knock on wood with this, we don't want none of these guys to get hurt. That's never what we want. But if those two guys get hurt and Sam comes in, I think he can keep the job and never look back. I think all of these guys make a great case to be the starter. It's just about who wins the job when all of them are healthy and who takes control of that offense. It's going to be a very interesting thing. But that's what I think about this quarterback controversy. I think it's so close. I'm not saying, okay, Trey, go get it. I'm not saying, okay, Brock, go get it. I'm not saying, Sam Donald, you're the veteran. You've been here the most. You go get it. I think all of these guys can start. I think all of these guys can be successful in this system. It's just about who does it, who puts it on film, who gets the grasp of the team, who gets the grasp of the locker room first. Who do the guys want as that quarterback? Because that means a lot. Fred Warner, he may sprint a little bit faster. Jerry Greenlaw, he may sprint a little bit faster if his guy's the quarterback. Because I know if I get my guy to football, we're good. We're going to win. Let me know who wins this quarterback controversy. And let's be objective about this in the comments. Let's not say Sam Darnold was terrible for a couple years with New York and Carolina. Let's not say that. Let's And let, if you haven't watched, you know, the 22 film, I'm, I showed you clips. I've done all of that. But if you want to see more, go check that out. Now, Trey Lance, not a lot of film out there on him. So we can't effectively say that. But we know the talent. We know what he did in college. And Brock Purdy, knowing his film, knowing he has some weaknesses. And I think San Francisco, San Francisco, did a great job of covering up those weaknesses. But still, out of all of these guys, who wins it? How close do you think it is? Because I think it's closer than ever, and I need to see it. <laughs> That's going to do it for today. And now, we out.